Another way to communicate would obviously be uh, if in the process of an instant message session, if you were talking uh, or communicating the instant message and you want to escalate the voice and then you decide, hey, you know what, we really need video here. We need to kind of get an idea of what each other is thinking. And sometimes um, having a video session is uh, one step closer to, you know, real-time communication between two individuals where you can see, you know, facial expressions or you may just have something you want to show them physically that you can't describe in an IM session or, or by words in a regular phone call, then you can add video to the session. And generally that's done after you've initiated the wrong one. Let me bring Robert back up. After you've initiated the call, you could also add video. Or you could just st start a video call, and by starting a video call, uh, given that both of you have a web camera, then the two of you can speak and, and see each other at the same, t same time. Now, at Engage, we don't use video calls that often, but there are times that we do. We also have a roundtable device. It's a Polycom, uh, pretty elaborate co Polycom conference phone. It has multiple cameras that, are, that give you basically a 360-degree view so that if you wanted to, you could set it on a conference table and anyone in, in the conference that uh, is actually seated at the table with the device can be seen by an individual who is not on site or at the conference who has joined via, via a video call through live meeting can see everyone at the table and then of course those individuals can see the individual that they're speaking to that's not on site. Uh, do we have any questions so far? All right, moving right along. Since uh, Engage is involved in supporting uh, other organizations, uh, whether it be through desktop support or um, providing managed services, uh, providing consulting service, what have you, oftentimes we, need, we have the need to do a screen share or a remote desktop. And if that individual does not have Office Communication Server or Microsoft Office Communicator client installed, and they're not connected to this system or a federated system, what we can do is send them an invite by using a meet now session. So using the mock client, if I click this down arrow here and then go to the meet now, I can send that individual an email. And you can see here, it starts a new email session with a couple of links built into the email. I can send this email to the individual, and that individual can follow the on-screen information by clicking the join using a web browser. And then we can have an instant message session, or we can have a remote desktop session based on uh, just sending this email. And communicator web access is what makes this possible. So when that user opens the email, clicks on the join using a web browser, I'm going to click that here just to give you an idea. This is what they'll see when they click the link. It goes to, of course, our implementation of communicator web access. And what that user would be instructed to do was would be, excuse me, do you have a user account on the dynamicsondemand.com network? And that would be no. So they would click no and it changes the display and the, the login. And then they could just type in a name. Doesn't really matter what it is and click join the session. Now if it's the first time they've ever used this, they'll have to download an ActiveX control and install it to be able to join the session. Minimize this. As you can see, 
now I'm logged into Communicator Web Access, not as a user on the system, whether it be through CWA or through the mock client, but just as a standard user, and we can communicate. So this can be done with anyone that's not on your network, as long as they have internet access and a valid email account. I'll go a step further and say you don't have to have an email account because you could actually verbally tell them what the URL is. It just you're prone to mistakes at that point if you don't copy and paste it. Now at that point, once you've established communications with this user who's not involved in your system or not connected to your system. They could certainly escalate it to a voice call if they wanted to. Now, this wouldn't be with a mock client or voice over IP, but they could choose to put in their home phone number, their office number, a uh, cell phone number, or what have you, and that call would connect them via their uh, PSTN device, like let's say it's a mobile device, to your mock client, and then the two of you can speak. And at that point, it's been escalated to a voice call. Or they can share their desktop if you need to provide some assistance, or if you just need to view something on their desktop. So it's a huge support. It's a huge support tool. Okay, I see I've got a question from Oleg. Does High Scott, what kind of infrastructure is required? Uh, towards the end of this presentation, I'm going to show you a workflow that's going to, it's a poster that's going to give you a very good idea of the infrastructure required. And just keep in mind, if, if you don't want to build this system out, there are many hosters, um, of course, Engage hosted as well, and we'd love to take anyone on as, as a client. But it's certainly capable of being built out by yourself as well. Anyway, back to the uh, to the user that's not on your system. If he wants to share out his desktop, he just clicks the share desktop. Again, if this is the first time it's ever been used, most likely they'll they'll download an ActiveX uh, control, install it. The share desktop session will will begin, and if they choose to give you control, you can take over their computer and assist them with whatever they need assistance with. And then once they're finished with the session, they close the session these uh, controls will be uninstalled. So it's fairly non-invasive and a very handy tool to use in support of other people. I'm going to close that session. Close this one. Just real quick, I want to show you a couple of other things about the mock client. Because we have voice integrated with our system. Uh, we have the option of forwarding calls out instead of taking a call directly on the mock client uh, because usually uh, the way that Engage uses it is mostly we use headsets. Now we do have a few devices uh, like polycom phones uh, such as the CX100, the CX200, the CX700 that uh, integrate very well with Office Communicator but mostly what we use are just a communicator client and headsets, whether it be a USB headset, a Bluetooth headset, or a standard analog headset, all will work. But if you choose not to take the client, I just want to show you real quick. We see a uh, pop-up here from, from Dale, and his status changed, so he must have been unavailable or away, and he's changed to available, just to give you an idea of how that tagging works. Anyway, back over here. If we choose to, we can forward this this call, this incoming call, to straight to voicemail if we want. We can set a new number, like a cell phone or the office or what have you, uh, or you can send it to a contact. Or you can have it simultaneously ring both your mock client and another phone number. Or you can just say send it straight to voicemail, which I showed you up here. Right now, I've got do not forward call selected, and that's generally how I keep it, unless I know I'm going to be away for a while, and then I may send it straight to my cell phone or straight to voicemail, depending on what's going on. 